Hey, and welcome everybody. What we have here today is a build series. This is a build series that's gonna go on and on and on and on as far as we can possibly take it to give you all of the cool builds, tips and tricks along the way, along with the hardware we're gonna be putting into these builds and letting you know uh, how they perform and what the dollar amount is. We're then gonna take those builds and we're gonna put them up on our online website and offer them for sale, not only to anyone who's watching this video, but to anyone that sees it online that wants to buy a quality build, know how it was put together, what components went into it, and the exact cost breakdown that we came up with. Okay, so I, I wanna start off by letting you guys know that uh, we're planning to do many builds. I mean, this is really just the start. This is the floor. We're gonna keep growing and growing and growing as far as the builds go. We're gonna offer them for sale and we wanna get into expert level builds with full water cooling and some top of the line parts, but we will never abandon the two categories that I'm about to show you right now because this is where most people fit into the gaming market, to the PC market, uh, or even if it's a workstation, this is where most people will fall into. We have your basic setup over here, which I don't have all the parts to, and when I do, we'll do a build tutorial on that. Uh, but this is kind of your starter PC build. And then the second category we have is a full ATX build with, you know, some better components. Uh, we have a platinum certified 750 watt uh, power supply from Corsair. We have uh, behind it a GTX 1070. Uh, we'll be using some Kingston, uh, uh, Kingston SSD, a Western digital uh, hard drive for mass storage. We have the um, Ryzen 5 2600X for the slightly better gaming specs. We have some 3200 megahertz, uh, 16 gigs of RAM. And to wrap it all up, we have the X470 uh, Gaming Carbon Pro from MSI. So putting all that together, I estimate this build is going to cost around $1,000. And to me, that's a great jumping off point for having a build that is 100% upgradable. Oh. I didn't even mention that we have the H510i, which is a great case if you're looking to get in things like all-in-one water cooling, uh, RGB fans, uh, extra case cooling, larger graphics cards, things like that as opposed to some of the other more budget cases. There's just so much that this build can continue to provide two, three, four, five years down the line that something like this just won't quite meet but we are looking, you know, this is probably gonna be a five, $600 build, or this is, this is definitely gonna be the $1,000 mark. So really, for anyone who's interested in buying a computer right now, why would you choose one over the other? Well, what I just said is a huge reason why. Uh, getting something that can upgrade with you without having to change out a ton of parts. So if you have the money to spend right now, you know, it's better to invest it in something that will upgrade a lot easier moving forward and a lot less expensively than something like the basic build will. Now, if you only have $500, know that you could make a few simple upgrades and get something a little bit closer to the $1,000 setup in six months to a year. So you're not really losing either way. It just depends on what kind of gaming you wanna get into or what kind of work you're gonna be doing with your PC. Uh, your support is what allows us to do this. So please like and subscribe if you like this content and wanna see more. Otherwise, I'm gonna jump in and take this all apart and get to building. So I just wanna point out a couple things and really I'm gonna to get to it. The motherboard I got was previously used, uh, but it was slightly used. Person installed it once, uh, and then they ended up taking it out and replacing it with another motherboard, basically within the first 30 days and could not return it. Uh, processor is brand new. So I'm supplying this with a brand new CPU that will have full warranty. So the RAM itself, I have a full receipt of, still brand new. The SSD we're using, brand new. 
The power supply we're using, brand new. The case we're using, brand new. So there's not really much in here that is actually used besides the motherboard, which I'm gonna be testing today to make sure it's still 100% viable and good for use. So this is on camera. You can see me opening this for the first time. It's the 1st of October. That's when this factory seal was taken off. This is some pretty cool stuff. Um, O-L-O-Y is the name of the company. It's RGB RAM, it's 3200 megahertz, and it was like 80 bucks. Heck of a deal if it actually works out. Kabow. All right, all right. I don't know why I'm whispering, but I am. The 2600X. Give it a little test wiggle, make sure it's not moving around, and we are golden. Okay, so I kind of realized why I got this for such a good deal, and it's because the backplate is missing on this motherboard. Oh shit, mother I do have an extra one, it's just not here, so I won't be able to complete most of this setup until tomorrow, uh, but I am gonna kind of get it put together to the point where I can test the motherboard itself and make sure the motherboard is good. As you guys can see, the bracket on the back here is missing, and that's why I got such a good deal on this motherboard, probably because the person who bought it used that back plate for another motherboard that they had. I don't wanna fire this thing up and post to a monitor, but I do wanna make sure that this motherboard works. So I'm gonna give you guys kind of a pro tip. My man! Um, hook everything up as far as your CPU power and your uh, ATX power goes, your 24 pin. And then come over here, turn your power supply on, and without having to hook it up to the case, I'm going to find the power switch, which here is the middle pin. I'm gonna connect it, I'm gonna bridge those two, I'm gonna let this do its post, and there we go, we have power. That's just a nice way to check if you do have power going to the motherboard and that it's at least gonna turn on for you. Uh, that's not really the best indicator. You do wanna hook up a monitor, but like I said, without that back plate, I don't wanna fire up that CPU and basically fry it while I'm trying to post. I'd rather wait until I get a back plate. So basically, I'll have to wait until tomorrow to finish this build up, but I do wanna show you guys what you can do in the meantime while you're waiting for something. Say you're waiting for something to come in, but you wanna get everything prepped and ready so the day it comes in, you can get going. And as long as it's not your case, then we can kind of move on to the next step, which is prepping the case to get ready for the motherboard and everything else to go along with it. Next step is cable management. Basically, case management, cable management, same thing. Bam. Oh, shock, ah. So here's the deal, you guys. This is uh, basically the first step to what you get when you spend a little more than just kind of a budget build, right? You start to get added value, such as, oh, Jesus, man. You get full added value, such as cable management. This is a premium example of good cable management. Uh, you get a full RGB fan controller, and then it comes with the pre-installed PWM fans, which allows that to run different voltages through to control the speed. So it's not just running at one speed all the time. You also get a lot of different cable management ports. You get your uh, SATA adapters here. Basically, uh, you can use a bracketed mount here. Um, you also get the whole uh, shroud down here that covers your power supply as well as your cable management. So it's not taking up space on the inside of your case. Number one, looking ugly. Number two, taking up space for that important airflow to move through. 
Um, so that's kind of what you get when you spend a little more money is uh, you, you start to get, I don't even know if I'd consider them luxury as so much as these massive benefits that seem inconsequential that will add up later. So basically I have everything put back together here, um, routed all the cables and back, uh, installed the power supply, installed the SSD and hard drive. Uh, I gave you guys a little bit of a sped up clip to see all that. Uh, and all that's left to do is uh, install the graphics card, install the motherboard with the uh, CPU cooler and everything else I've already done. Took me literally 15 minutes to do this part, but it gives me a nice clean case with all the wires. You can kind of see them sticking out here, ready to be plugged in and routed once I get the motherboard here, or sorry, the back plate for the motherboard here tomorrow. So kind of a little bit of a setback, but you guys will see me tomorrow, have a little bit different shirt on, and we'll wrap this build up and we'll fire it up so you guys can see how it performs, uh, do a couple bench tests, get windows installed, all that good stuff, and then I'll list it online for somebody to buy. So with a quick cut of the camera, I'm gonna be in a different shirt. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey everybody, I'm back. Uh, so, Good news, I got the back plate, so we're ready to rock on that front. And uh, I'm ready to go. I really didn't want to wait another 24 hours to finish this up, so I'll shut up and keep moving forward. Man, there's not much to do besides hook in a bunch of wires. Oh yeah, that looks kind of weak sauce though. And as always, you want to tighten down diagonally, which I already kind of screwed up. Okay, so now that I have the CPU installed and everything ready to go, I'm gonna kind of get this prepped, installed. I gotta put in a little bit of hardware. I don't want you guys to watch all that. It's honestly kind of boring and super easy. So uh, I'm probably just gonna cut and fast forward to after I have this motherboard installed and I have some of the wiring already done and we can check it out and see how it looks. So let's make a switch. And voila, we are ready to rock, my friends. This was a fun and pretty easy build. We're kind of working our way up as far as expert level builds go. So this is kind of the beginning of the better PCs that we're gonna be building. Really everything went extremely smooth. I really didn't have to mess with too much wiring. It was really well thought out and put together from the get go. So it made this process 10 times easier. So I'm gonna fire this guy up. We're gonna see what it looks like with all the lights and color going on. There's not a ton of RGB. I don't really need to go that route. Uh, that's kind of an added value. If you wanna upgrade later, and throw in uh, some RGB fans, maybe even an all-in-one radiator uh, with some lighting on it. You know, hey, by all means, please do it. But to really get rocking, I mean, RGB, it's not like it, you know, it's not like a spoiler on a car. It doesn't add 20%, you know, to your horsepower or to your gaming experience. It's really all aesthetics. So, so I'm gonna fire this guy up like I said, I, I think this turned out really, really well. I'll give you guys a little close up. So there it is, we got this guy all fired up. There is a few extra things that I will have to do. I will have to put windows on it. I will need to kind of tweak a few things to make sure it's running properly and bench test it. Hey, I'll put the results at the end of the video. I'll put a link to the actual system itself up for sale in the video, but I want your feedback most of all. What would you do if you had $1,000 to spend on your computer? What components would you buy? What would you do differently? Would you get a different CPU, different graphics card? Please tell us, we wanna know so we can keep these updated moving into the future and we can offer something that most people would like and enjoy. So as always, we appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this content. Please share it with all your friends and everybody you know and we'll see you on the next video. 
Thanks everybody for watching once again and have a good day.